Valvular heart disease, VHD, refers to a group of conditions in which the valves of the heart, which are responsible for regulating blood flow within the chambers of the heart and between the heart and the major blood vessels, do not function properly. The heart has four valves, the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, the aortic valve, and the pulmonary valve. These valves open and close in a coordinated manner to ensure the unidirectional flow of blood through the heart. In valvular heart disease, one or more of these valves may be affected by structural abnormalities or functional issues, leading to disruptions in blood flow. The two main types of valvular heart disease are stenosis and regurgitation. Stenosis. This occurs when a valve becomes narrowed or constricted, impeding the normal flow of blood through the heart. This narrowing makes it harder for the heart to pump blood efficiently, leading to increased stress on the heart muscle. Regurgitation, insufficiency, or incompetence. In this condition, a valve fails to close properly, allowing blood to leak backward into the chamber it came from. This backflow forces the heart to work harder to maintain forward blood flow. The causes of valvular heart disease can be congenital, present at birth, or acquired, developed later in life. Acquired valvular diseases often result from conditions such as rheumatic fever, infective endocarditis, degenerative changes with aging, or other medical conditions affecting the heart valves. Common symptoms of valvular heart disease may include fatigue, shortness of breath, chest pain, palpitations, and swelling in the legs and ankles. Diagnosis typically involves a combination of clinical evaluation, imaging studies such as echocardiography, and sometimes invasive procedures like cardiac catheterization. Management of valvular heart disease depends on the severity of the condition and may include medications to alleviate symptoms, lifestyle modifications, and in more severe cases, surgical interventions such as valve repair or replacement. Regular follow-up and monitoring are essential to assess the progression of the disease and adjust the treatment plan accordingly. Early detection and appropriate management are crucial to improving outcomes and preventing complications associated with valvular heart disease. Mechanisms and Pathophysiology of Valvular Heart Disease Valvular heart disease, VHD, encompasses a spectrum of conditions characterized by abnormalities in the structure and function of the heart valves, crucial components in maintaining the unidirectional flow of blood through the heart. Understanding the intricate mechanisms and pathophysiology of VHD is essential for both clinicians and researchers seeking to develop effective diagnostic and therapeutic strategies. Structural Basis of Valvular Dysfunction the valves of the heart are intricate structures composed of leaflets, or cusps, a supporting annulus, and often chordae tendineae. These components work in harmony to ensure proper valve opening and closure during each cardiac cycle. The structural integrity of these components is paramount for normal valve function. Mechanisms leading to valvular dysfunction can be broadly categorized into congenital and acquired factors. Congenital factors. Genetic predisposition. Certain genetic mutations can predispose individuals to congenital valve abnormalities. These may affect the development of valve leaflets, annulus, or other supporting structures, leading to structural defects that manifest later in life. Acquired factors. Degenerative changes over time, the cumulative effects of aging, wear, and tear, and exposure to risk factors such as hypertension and hypercholesterolemia can contribute to degenerative changes in the valves. This often results in calcification, fibrosis, and thickening of valve leaflets, compromising their flexibility and function. Inflammatory processes. Conditions such as rheumatic fever or infective endocarditis can initiate inflammatory responses that directly affect the valves. In rheumatic fever, for instance, an autoimmune reaction triggered by streptococcal infection can lead to inflammation and scarring of the valve tissue. Hemodynamic consequences. The alterations in valve structure lead to hemodynamic changes that impact cardiac function. Two main types of hemodynamic abnormalities are associated with VHD. Stenosis. Increased pressure gradient in valvular stenosis, the narrowed valve impedes the forward flow of blood, resulting in an increased pressure gradient across the valve. This elevated pressure workload can lead to hypertrophy of the heart chamber upstream of the stenotic valve as the heart works harder to overcome the obstruction. Regurgitation. Volume overload. Valvular regurgitation allows backward flow of blood during ventricular relaxation. This leads to volume overload in the heart chamber that received the regurgitant flow. Over time, this increased volume can cause chamber dilation and eccentric hypertrophy. Cellular and molecular pathways. 
At the cellular and molecular levels, VHD involves complex interactions and signaling pathways. Inflammatory mediators, matrix metalloproteinases, and reactive oxygen species play pivotal roles in remodeling the extracellular matrix of valve tissues. These processes contribute to fibrosis, calcification, and alterations in tissue elasticity, collectively compromising the normal biomechanical properties of the valves. Genetic Insights Advancements in genetic research have unveiled specific genetic mutations associated with hereditary forms of valvular diseases. Understanding the genetic basis provides insights into the molecular pathways involved and may guide the development of targeted therapies. The mechanisms and pathophysiology of valvular heart disease involve a multifaceted interplay of genetic, structural, hemodynamic, and molecular factors. Unraveling these complexities is crucial for the development of precision medicine approaches, allowing tailored interventions based on the specific underlying mechanisms in individual patients. Ongoing research in this field holds the promise of uncovering novel therapeutic targets and improving outcomes for individuals affected by VHD. Diagnostic Imaging Techniques in Valvular Heart Disease Valvular heart disease, VHD, demands accurate and comprehensive diagnostic evaluation to guide appropriate management strategies. Advances in diagnostic imaging techniques have revolutionized the assessment of valvular disorders, enabling clinicians to visualize structural abnormalities, assess hemodynamics, and plan interventions with greater precision. Echocardiography Echocardiography stands as the cornerstone of valvular assessment, offering real-time imaging with excellent spatial resolution. Transthoracic Echocardiography, TTE TTE provides a non-invasive, readily available assessment of valve structure and function. High-frequency sound waves are used to create detailed images of the heart valves, allowing clinicians to evaluate valve morphology, assess leaflet motion, and quantify stenosis or regurgitation severity. Transesophageal echocardiography, T. T offers a more detailed and close-up view of the heart valves by placing the ultrasound probe in the esophagus. This method is particularly useful for assessing the posterior structures of the heart, such as the mitral valve, and for detecting subtle valve abnormalities not easily visualized with TTE. Cardiac Magnetic Resonance Imaging, MRI. Cardiac MRI provides a comprehensive assessment of cardiac structure, function, and tissue characteristics. Valve Morphology and Function. MRI allows for detailed visualization of valve morphology and dynamic assessment of valve function. It provides accurate quantification of regurgitant volumes and stenotic valve areas, aiding in the determination of disease severity. Tissue Characterization By assessing myocardial tissue characteristics, MRI can detect fibrosis, inflammation, and other structural abnormalities associated with valvular diseases. This additional information aids in the understanding of the underlying pathophysiology and guides therapeutic decisions. Computed Tomography Angiography CTA Cardiac CT angiography is a valuable tool for visualizing coronary anatomy and assessing valve structure. 3D visualization. CTA allows for three-dimensional visualization of the heart and its valves. This is particularly useful for pre-procedural planning in cases where surgical or transcatheter interventions are being considered. Calcification assessment. Detection and quantification of valve calcification are crucial in assessing disease severity, especially in aortic stenosis. CTA can provide detailed information on the extent of calcification, aiding in risk stratification and treatment planning. Nuclear imaging. Nuclear imaging techniques, such as radionuclide angiography, can provide functional information about blood flow and cardiac performance. Stress testing. Stress imaging, often combined with radionuclide tracers, can assess the impact of valvular disease on myocardial perfusion and function during exercise or pharmacological stress. This is particularly relevant in assessing the functional significance of valve lesions. Myocardial perfusion imaging. By evaluating myocardial perfusion, nuclear imaging techniques contribute to understanding the overall impact of valvular lesions on cardiac function and ischemic risk. The integration of various diagnostic imaging techniques plays a pivotal role in the comprehensive evaluation of valvular heart disease. Each modality offers unique advantages and the choice depends on the clinical scenario, the information required, and the patient's individual characteristics. The ongoing evolution of these imaging technologies continues to refine our ability to diagnose and manage valvular disorders effectively. Interventional Approaches and Surgical Options in Valvular Heart Disease Valvular Heart Disease, VHD, 
often requires therapeutic interventions to alleviate symptoms, improve quality of life, and prevent complications. The field of valvular interventions has seen significant advancements in both interventional and surgical approaches, offering a range of options tailored to the specific characteristics of each patient's valvular pathology. 1. Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement, TAVR Revolutionizing the treatment of aortic stenosis, TAVR is a minimally invasive procedure that has become a standard of care for selected patients. Procedure Overview TAVR involves the insertion of a bioprosthetic valve through a catheter, typically delivered via a peripheral artery, often the femoral artery, or through the apex of the heart. The new valve is deployed within the diseased aortic valve, restoring proper blood flow. Patient Selection TAVR is especially beneficial for elderly patients or those at high surgical risk. Its less invasive nature reduces recovery times and complications compared to traditional surgical aortic valve replacement, SAVR. 2. Mitral Valve Repair Preserving the native mitral valve whenever possible is a primary goal, and several techniques aim at repairing rather than replacing the valve. Annuloplasty Rings Annuloplasty involves the placement of a prosthetic ring around the mitral valve annulus to restore proper valve function. This helps in correcting annular dilatation, a common issue in mitral regurgitation. Cordal reconstruction. Repairing or replacing damaged chordae tendinii can be crucial for restoring proper leaflet motion and preventing mitral valve prolapse. Techniques such as cordal shortening or artificial chordae implantation are employed. 3. Surgical Aortic Valve Replacement, SAVR While TAVAR has gained prominence, SAVAR remains a critical option, especially for younger patients and those with specific anatomical considerations. Bioprosthetic and Mechanical Valves During SAVAR, the diseased aortic valve is removed and a new valve is implanted. Choices include bioprosthetic valves made from animal tissue or mechanical valves made from synthetic materials. Each has its advantages and considerations. Ross Procedure in cases where the aortic valve and the ascending aorta are affected, the Ross procedure involves replacing the aortic valve with the patient's own pulmonary valve and then replacing the pulmonary valve with a homograft or a prosthetic valve. 4. Mitraclip for mitral regurgitation For select patients not amenable to surgical intervention, the mitraclip offers a percutaneous option for mitral valve repair. Procedure Overview Mitraclip involves the placement of a clip on the mitral valve leaflets bringing them together to reduce regurgitation. This is achieved through a catheter-based approach, typically introduced through a vein in the groin. Patient Selection Mitraclip is suitable for patients at prohibitive surgical risk or those with functional mitral regurgitation. It provides a less invasive option for those who may not tolerate open-heart surgery. But Tricuspid Valve Interventions The tricuspid valve, often neglected in the past, is gaining attention, and interventions are evolving to address tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid valve repair. Techniques similar to those used for mitral valve repair, including annuloplasty and chordal reconstruction, are applied to the tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve repair is increasingly considered in the context of left-sided heart disease. The management of valvular heart disease has evolved significantly, offering a spectrum of interventional and surgical options. The choice of intervention depends on factors such as the type and severity of valvular pathology, patient characteristics, and overall risk. With ongoing advancements, the field continues to refine and expand its repertoire, providing tailored solutions for each patient's unique condition. Close collaboration between cardiologists and cardiac surgeons is essential to determine the most appropriate approach for optimal patient outcomes. Impact on Quality of Life and Patient Management in Valvular Heart Disease Valvular heart disease, VHD, exerts a profound influence on the quality of life of affected individuals, encompassing both physical and psychosocial dimensions. As a chronic condition, VHD necessitates a comprehensive and patient-centered management approach that addresses symptoms, optimizes treatment strategies, and enhances overall well-being. 1. Physical Impact Symptoms and Functional Limitations the severity of valvular dysfunction correlates with the manifestation of symptoms such as fatigue, dyspnea, chest pain, and palpitations. These symptoms can significantly impair daily activities and exercise tolerance, diminishing the overall physical capacity of individuals with VHD. Progression and Complications Untreated or poorly managed VHD can lead to disease progression, exacerbating symptoms, and increasing the risk of complications such as heart failure. 
arrhythmias, and endocarditis. The progressive nature of VHD underscores the importance of timely diagnosis and intervention. 2. Psychosocial Impact Emotional Well-Being Living with a chronic heart condition can evoke a range of emotions, including anxiety, depression, and fear. Uncertainty about the future, concerns about treatment outcomes, and adjustments to lifestyle changes contribute to the emotional burden experienced by patients with VHD. Social Impact VHD can impact social relationships and daily activities. Individuals may find themselves limited in their ability to engage in social events, work, or recreational pursuits. Social support and understanding from family, friends, and healthcare providers play a crucial role in mitigating these challenges. 3. Patient Management Strategies Multidisciplinary Care Teams The management of VHD requires collaboration among healthcare professionals, including cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, nurses, and rehabilitation specialists. A multidisciplinary approach ensures a comprehensive evaluation, personalized treatment plans, and ongoing support for patients. Education and Empowerment Patient education is a cornerstone of effective management. Empowering individuals with knowledge about their condition, treatment options, and lifestyle modifications enhances their ability to actively participate in decision-making and self-care. Lifestyle Modifications Adopting a heart-healthy lifestyle is crucial in managing VHD. Patients are encouraged to adhere to dietary restrictions, maintain a regular exercise regimen, and manage risk factors such as hypertension and diabetes. Smoking cessation is particularly emphasized to reduce cardiovascular risk. Psychosocial support. Recognizing and addressing the psychosocial aspects of VHD is integral to holistic patient care. Mental health support, counseling, and patient support groups can provide a platform for individuals to share experiences, gain coping strategies, and foster resilience. Regular monitoring and follow-up. Given the chronic nature of VHD, regular monitoring and follow-up with healthcare providers are essential. This ensures timely adjustments to treatment plans, assessment of disease progression, and addressing emerging concerns to optimize long-term outcomes. Managing the impact of valvular heart disease extends beyond medical interventions to encompass the holistic well-being of affected individuals. By addressing the physical and psychosocial dimensions of the disease, implementing personalized management plans, and fostering patient empowerment. Healthcare providers strive to enhance the quality of life for individuals living with VHD. Ongoing research, patient advocacy, and advancements in therapeutic approaches contribute to an evolving landscape of care that aims to optimize outcomes and improve the overall experience for those affected by VHD.